Rick, I've seen a lot of Bensons at a lot of events like this. I've never seen one quite this nice. What prompted you to put this much work into a Benson B-8 gyrocopter? Well, after many years of going to the conventions and looking at all the different machines and they were just basic, you know, aluminum airframes, I thought, you know, there's got to be a better way to do this. And I've got some motorcycle training and background and I kind of took that technology and put it into this gyro. Let's talk about just flying gyros. What got you started in these? There seems to be a lot of crossover between guys who like motorcycles and guys who like gyroplanes. Well, as a kid, you know, I had go-karts and mini bikes and, you know, all kinds of stuff to work on. I guess that's how I kind of got my mechanical ability, but my father was a pilot. He was in instrumental in, in, you know, my aviation background because we were always at the airport. I grew up at the airport and, um, we flew two or three times a week, you know, and, and so what really got me into gyros wasn't the motorcycles. It was when I was a child, we had Air Force air shows at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base back in the 50s and 60s. Unbelievable air shows. Tankers and B-52s and stuff locked together at flight line level flying across the flight line. Dr. Benson would come to the air shows. He would bring his gyro from Raleigh, North Carolina, and fly this thing. Well, I caught word that he, was, he would take his machine. When he got into town, he would come in a day or two early, and he would go to this little gas station that was right down the road from my house. Well, I'd ride my bicycle down there, and I'd be waiting on him. And sure enough, here he would come. Had his little gyro, the spirit of Kitty Hawk. He would clean it all up and the guys at the gas station would air his tires and, you know, gas it up and stuff. And then he would leave and I got to meet the man, you know, as a child. And my father would take me to the air show and I get to see him fly. And I, I just shake my head. I said, Dad, that thing is cool, you know. It makes all kinds of noise and look at it, you know. Well, fast forward 35 years, you know, I, I went through all kinds of uh you know, motorcycle uh, shops that I worked in and all this and that. And um, Benson went out of business in 1985. And this is about the time I decided to get back into gyros or get involved in it. Went to a couple conventions and that's when I got involved with the PRA and learned about it and went to the conventions, saw the machines fly, almost bought a machine, didn't know a thing about them, but all I knew that I wanted one. Well. I looked at one, almost bought it, and I, I was smart enough to know that I better ask somebody about this thing. And Bill Parsons at that time was probably the top guy around. So I said, Bill, I introduced myself to him, and I said, Bill, I'm looking at a gyro over here. Would you please come over and take a look at it and tell me what you think about this? So he comes over and in Bill's typical manner, that's good, that's bad, that's good, that's bad, you know, really fast because he was a busy man. Well, I'm taking all this in, you know, and, and um, which taught me a lot. I thought, well, you know what? If these guys can build something, so can I. And I think it's probably better if I just go ahead and build it. That way I know what I got. So anyway, I left that convention, met up with Glenn Bundy. He had the museum in Brookville then. Benson was out of business. Glenn was flying a Benson. I watched him fly, and that kind of sparked the interest again. So I met him at Kinko Copiers. He had a set of Benson plans. We made copies of his plans, and that's how I got started. I didn't even have a bill of materials. I had to actually sit down, and lay the plans out, look at all the dimensions, figure it all out, and then order the material. I had it shipped in, and I just started working on it. And that resulted in what's behind us here? That's it. It, it took me two years of my spare time in between all the other projects that I you know, was working on at that time. And I just, you know, I thought, well, you know, being in the motorcycle business and, and that, you know, there's a lot of guys, the first name that probably comes up in the motorcycle world is Arlen Ness. Everybody knows Arlen Ness. Well, I thought, you know, if I could build a, a gyro that would have the caliber of an Arlen Ness motorcycle, what a draw that would be, or, you know, the ooh-ah factor. And it paid off because that's exactly what's happened. I mean, people come up and they wow, that's something, you know. I want one of those. If you own a Cirrus today or if you're considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. 
Avidon, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3 R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidon Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3 R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. It almost looks too pretty to smash bugs with. We're going to see you fly this week? I'm a fair weather flyer, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't like it when it's windy. And today, we've got a direct crosswind out here. It's probably 15 mile an hour to 20 miles an hour. The gyro will handle it, but I don't feel comfortable flying in this, this kind of weather. I'm the kind of guy that, you know, I get done with dinner and it's a nice evening or whatever. I tell the wife, say, hey, you know, it's time to go to the airport. And I'll go out, pull it out, and go fly for an hour or whatever. I've got this machine and I've got another machine that I built at Two Place, uh, Twin Star. It's a lot bigger machine. They're just a ball to fly. All right, last question. Looking back at what you thought it would be like when you were a kid and first saw them fly, is it that much fun or more or less? It is that much fun. I mean, it's a desire, you know, I guess that you acquire or whatever. You know, I guess from the first time I saw an ad in the popular mechanics magazine and popular science and all that you know when you're a kid you say man Benson was a marketing genius you know he envisioned everybody to have one of these in their backyard or in their in their driveway and um, it caught on you know and and uh, the, the gyro was probably the most popular experimental aircraft at all times before the EAA got involved and started building there were more gyros out there than anything but the safety factor wasn't there because they didn't have two-place trainers. They didn't, you had to learn to fly the thing with a book, right. you know, and, and a lot of guys survived, some of them didn't. I learned to fly in a two-place Parsons trainer. If it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be flying today, you know, because they are a handful until you learn how to manage it. They fly kind of like an airplane, but they don't fly like an airplane. It's blade management, learn how to control it. The takeoff and landings are totally different but they're just a hoot to fly. I mean, it's like flying a motorcycle, you know, in the sky. <laughs>